The park gives no clue to the casual visitor of all that's happened. The items from the collection come from around the globe and they come from dealers, auction houses, and more and more they're coming from donors. People just walk in and donate items. And what I'd really like to do is make all that available to park visitors. I'm Daniel Hearsom and I'm Chairman of the Hearsom Collection, a registered charity that exists to collect, preserve and make available the heritage of Richmond Park. The park is hugely important. Over the centuries it has been home to royalty, aristocrats, four prime ministers, two Olympics, various military experiments and a surprisingly wide array of other activities. This is one of my favourite objects, really for the story. I think it was probably quite a shocking novel in its day uh, because you have this English officer who uh, has a love affair with a nun. Lord John Russell had this book published and then very shortly afterwards clearly regretted it and actually tried to destroy all the copies that existed, um, but obviously failed. Um, Lord John Russell became a Prime Minister of, of Britain. Certainly he looks very prim and proper when you see pictures of him, but he obviously had a bit of a character underneath. The collection is stored in this office. We simply don't have enough space for storage or proper working conditions for the professionals and the volunteers. We looked within Pembroke Lodge, but there isn't enough space. We decided that we really needed another building. Engaging the public is also key, and so we asked them for their views. Oh yeah, if there was a museum here I'd definitely be interested to visit and um, get a bit more insight into the history of this place. What I struggled to find is the history of Richmond Park. How, how long has it been here? Why is it here? If there was a museum, so that would be great. So we've conducted a consultation with park visitors and we've had a fantastic response with over a thousand people getting involved and it's a clear overwhelming support for the visitor centre. We've had 94% of people think it's a really good idea and 91% of people agree with the proposed location. Richmond Park is um, probably one of the most important green spaces in the whole of London and it has a very rich heritage. It's very important that this heritage is brought to a wider community through the Heritage Pavilion and we really look forward to that opportunity to work closely with that archive and the collections and um, engaging more people in that heritage. At the Holy Lodge Centre we're greatly looking forward to working with the Heritage Pavilion. We are able to offer school children and other community groups heritage sessions. We also specialise in having children from special needs schools um, and adults and community groups with any kind of learning difficulty. Charities have always have limited resources and it is fantastic when we can work together and collaborate and pool our resources. We can then share expertise, we can share practical resources and we can share our time. The pavilion will be built on this section of the car park, entirely on car park land so there's no detrimental effect on wildlife, trees, ecology or anything else. There will be a complete programme of activities including talks, theme displays, multimedia access to whichever aspect of the park the visitor is interested in and of course access to the archive. We have a wealth of these kinds of stories to tell about the park but we are very constrained by a location as to where we can mount and display such things. The planned heritage pavilion will of course provide us with the opportunity to have a series of themed exhibitions on different topics which hopefully will interest a whole range of people. I think when we take children out of the classroom and they get a chance to learn in situ, they come alive, they, you know, they think in a different way, they love it. It seems a very inspiring project and we're very proud to be a part of it. Wide Horizons is an outdoor education trust and we work with 32,000 children a year. Um, the vast majority of those children are from inner city London. 
For us it's immensely important to be a partner with the Heritage Pavilion and we know that it's a great opportunity to use the environment that we have here in Richmond Park to improve their learning and to give them a real experience that's going to stay with them for a very long time. I think you'd be hard pushed to find a site like Richmond Park anywhere in the world. The wildlife here is important, it's also vulnerable to being lost. At the heart of our management work is the messaging, the understanding, the information we have to provide. What we really lack is somewhere to engage the public um, that they will come to to find out more about the park. Having a place such as the Heritage Pavilion that we're hoping to gain for Richmond Park will give us, give us that resource to, to, to really start engaging with the public in a, in a whole new way. We have about 200 volunteers in total, uh, friends, and I see the Heritage Pavilion as being their base, as it were. I think it can provide a lot better facilities for what we, our volunteers do, and I could see we could increase our volunteer numbers quite substantially as a result of that. In the last 10 to 15 years, the number of visitors has increased enormously. Obviously, they don't know the park. It's a national nature reserve, a site of special scientific interest, a European area of conservation, and so it needs to be conserved. It's suffering at the moment. You can probably see erosion of the landscape. I see us collaborating with the Heritage Pavilion in displays, information material, talks and so on that will get across to the public the message about conserving the park and importantly also getting across to them the particular specific things that they can do to protect the park. I think Richmond Park is beautiful, it's amazing. I, I don't live far from here, I live about a mile away and it's like an oasis in the middle of a concrete jungle in, in London where you're surrounded by all these tall buildings and suddenly you come to a place like this and it feels like you could be anywhere. It's peaceful and it's, it's just a great place to come. I'd just like to learn more about how this place came to be and, and what happened and I'm sure there'll be things that would surprise me. The park has about three or four million visitors a year, roughly equivalent to the British Museum, but there is absolutely nothing really to tell them about the ecology or the heritage of the park. We have all this information in and around this office and that should be out in a pavilion where everyone can enjoy it.